Hi, and welcome to Debunk File. My name is Sep, and today we're going to be talking about the mystery of the many creature from the Black Lagoon reboots. For our first edition of this year's Debunktober, we're going to be talking about what we love more than anything else in the world, universal monsters. And really, what's not to love? Macabre sets, eerie acting, an atmosphere so thick you can feel the smog and smoke emerge from your TV until you're submerged in the darkness and glued to the silver screen. Perfect for this time of year. As the years went on, horror began to evolve. By the 50s, gone were the days of the vampire and werewolf. It was a creature fest. With the advent of space travel and the interest in technology increased, horror movies became less about gothic horror and more about the terror that lurked in the stars and in science. Mutants and aliens became the new hit horror fad, and with Universal being the king of horror, they needed to adapt to maintain their status. That's why in 1954, they created a mutant monster flick called the Creature from the Black Lagoon, starring Julie Adams, Ben Chapman, and Rico Browning, playing the creature on land and underwater respectively. As a crazy fun fact, as of this recording, Rico Browning is still one of the last few Universal Monsters actors still alive at the ripe age of 90 years old. The film was of course a success, and truly birthed the horror sci-fi drive-in phenomena. It gained two sequels, there was Revenge of the Creature in 1955, and The Creature Walks Among Us in 1956. That was the last we saw of Gilman and his own movies, but he did make an appearance in The Monster Squad and The Monsters. With all of that said, everything changed for our friend Gilman when the 1990s rolled around. In 1999, the Mummy reboot opened to an insane success, which naturally greenlit a reboot for our beloved Gilman. Gary Ross was set to write and produce the film, but it never happened. As you will see, this will become a very common theme throughout this whole video. You see, there hasn't been a reboot of the Creature movie ever, and they've been in talks since the 80s. So today we're going to pick apart each failed attempt at a reboot, and trust me, there's a lot, and find out why they never made it into cinemas. Let's begin. In 1982, we had our first confirmed report of a Creature from the Black Lagoon reboot being made. Jack Arnold, the director of the original 1954 film, was set to direct alongside John Landis with Nigel Neal as the writer. This story, and the first known failed attempt at a Creature reboot, is pretty straightforward, but it's definitely worth mentioning. Neil had finished the script, which centered around two Gilmen, one good and one evil, being attacked by the Navy, and it was set to film in 3D, which was the big kicker. Universal had no incentive to film this movie in 3D, and due to Jaws 3D in production, they didn't want the films to clash and possibly split the box office earnings, which could doom both films. The budget concerns were there as well. Universal knew that Jaws would work, but unfortunately were unsure of Creature, and it seemed the popularity of 3D faded once again. That was a big drawing point, and also, Arnold did not want to come back due to his involvement with the Love Boat series, so the movie was never made and the first attempt was canned, until 1992. In 1992, the second failed attempt, and probably the most famous, was set to be directed by the legend himself, John Carpenter, who in fact knew a thing or two about reboots done right as he directed The Thing, which was a remake of the 50s B-movie classic, The Thing from Another World. Anyways, Carpenter was assigned by Universal with another film legend Rick Baker to do the makeup effects and Bill Phillips was assigned to write the script. This seemed like the obvious choice for a creature reboot. The talent is here and we know how well it could work, especially with Carpenter being a veteran in the horror genre, as his name alone could have elicited a huge box office draw. So why it was never given a green light is baffling. Now though, it's time to find out why this possible classic was never put to film. Carpenter faded into obscurity after the success of Halloween, and he mainly worked on cult films. The Thing, while an absolute classic now, wasn't successful and was hated by most general audiences. Actor Chevy Chase won Carpenter to direct the horror comedy Memoirs from an Invisible Man, which did pretty crappy, but it was big enough and hadn't come out yet, possibly giving Carpenter another shot at more expensive projects. He settled on, of course, a remake of Creature. His plan was to make it almost Lovecraftian in style, drawing beats from Shadow of Innsmouth, and with Rick Baker as the makeup artist and production designer, things like that were possible. A maquette does exist. It lies in Carpenter's horror man cave as seen in a documentary about the director's life and films. 
Unfortunately, as mentioned, Memoirs from an Invisible Man was a total flop, and that's the main reason most people point to when asking why this potentially amazing film never got the go-ahead. The film was in limbo, either waiting to start shooting or waiting to be cancelled, and neither happened. Universal failed to give it any recognition, and the movie was kicked. With Carpenter gone and Rick Baker waiting for a new director, they chose Ivan Reitman of Ghostbusters fame, who didn't agree with Baker's idea of the creature, and started to make it more monster than man. But we'll get back to Reitman's involvement later. There are many theories as to why this movie never got made. As mentioned, the failure of Memoirs of an Invisible Man. Carpenter's fall from grace from hotshot to cult filmmaker, or Universal's neglect for the entire project leading to Carpenter's impatience and leave to work on other things. And honestly, I think it's a little bit of all of them. On one hand, it's not Carpenter's fault that Memoirs of an Invisible Man failed, but it showed executives at Universal that the general public wanted nothing to do with classic monsters, which ties into Universal's complete blind eye to the whole creature project at all. And of course, there was Carpenter's impatience. He did make a movie two years later, so it seems he was either going to devote time to the reboot or get back to filmmaking. It's near impossible to pinpoint which it could have been, but again, I think it's safe to say a little bit of all fed into the creature reboot being dropped until 1995. In 1995, writers Herschel Weingrod and Timothy Harris proposed a script to Universal, which we can assume they liked because they were now looking for a director, and they looked at none other than Peter Jackson. This is another straightforward one here, but worth mentioning. So, to make a long story short, Jackson had no interest in the project and instead expressed interest in making a King Kong movie, which eventually, in 2005, he did. But two years later, he made his classic Lord of the Rings series. This makes sense. Jackson had a vision and knew what he wanted to do. If this film did happen, we might not have had the Lord of the Rings or 2005's King Kong. So, it's safe to say that I'm kinda glad this one stayed in the vault. So yes. Another creature reboot canned, and I know what you're all thinking. Yes, until 1996. In 1996, the aforementioned Ivan Reitman, director of the Ghostbusters movies, was up to helm the reboot. But that's pretty much all we know. He was going to do it, and he didn't. It's just common knowledge that's tossed around when talking about the failed reboots. On my hunt to find anything, I only ever found passing comments about his alleged involvement. It's a complete mystery, if he was ever even set to direct. The script was to be the same one that Carpenter was working from, just Reitman directing. It might have just been an idea in Universal's brain, but it's obvious they had no interest, so maybe Carpenter recommended him. It's nearly impossible to pinpoint anything about Reitman's involvement. No matter how deep I dig, I kept hitting a brick. Maybe one day we'll get an answer, but I think our answer may lie in a deep lagoon somewhere. And that was the end of the Creature reboot, of course, until 1999. We now circle back from where we started, with the success of the 1999 movie The Mummy, seeing a reboot of an old monster movie done in an almost Indiana Jones action-adventure style made Universal start second-guessing their distaste in a new creature movie. We talked about this at the very beginning, but to recap, the movie was set to be written and produced by Gary Ross. The script in question seemed to either be done or roughly done, because the plot was there and had been stated as a clash between civilized men and primitive men. Going with a more action route, the film would include a huge epic battle set piece like The Mummy, instead of relying on slow burn horror that made the original so scary at the time. It was in 2001 that Ross signed on for a remake and obviously it never happened. But in 2008 in a Q&A, Collider asked Ross about specifics on the project and he had this to say. What's going on with the creature from the Black Lagoon? I'm producing it. We're actually moving forward. What's the tone of it gonna be? It's not going to be campy. It's not a reference to what the original was. It's not reverential that way. We take it seriously. We found some scientific underpinnings for it, which my dad actually found in the original. He based it on a lungfish he found around that time. A lot of that was his. We're not approaching it in a campy, retro sort of way. Is it going to be based on the original and the sequels? Well, it's certainly going to be based on the original. My dad's favorite was The Creature Walks Among Us, and that was the last one which my dad also wrote. My dad actually died two weeks ago. We're going to be faithful to it. Does it have a director yet? That hasn't been decided yet. Will the creature be live or CGI? Well, those are decisions that will always be made during prep. The movie is not greenlit, let me say that. 
but we hope to be making it sometime next year. Is it going for scares though? Oh yeah, I don't think we're going to wink at the audience or make it silly in any way. I think we're going to take it seriously. It really looks like Ross was going to take this film very seriously and was really looking forward to getting a director on board and getting started. This was the last we heard about it from Ross, as it's been over a decade, and of course, there's no reboot to be found. Ross's vision would have surely been interesting, so it's a real shame it never made it to the screen. The take was fresh enough, and Ross surely had a ton of respect for the original, so it's safe to say this could have been a hit, or even a cult classic. But why did this get canned? God, I have no clue. Especially with the success of The Mummy, this should have been an absolute no-brainer. It would have made money regardless if it was bad. I'm really starting to think these attempts are somehow cursed. And yes, this was the last attempt, until 2002. Bear with me on this one here, because it might sound a bit familiar. Regardless, in 2002, Guillermo del Toro was attached to direct a new reboot after years of failure. And again, this seems like a no-brainer. Del Toro was a huge fan of the original and monster movies in general. Del Toro presented the idea of a more romantic movie focusing on the creature's love for the woman, a true Beauty and Beast story. Universal wasn't a fan of the very abstract idea and dropped him, but Del Toro isn't done yet. He'll be back. The reboot was picked up by writer Teddy Serafian, and the script was set to start writing in March of 2003. Two years later, in 2005, the movie found a director, Breck Eisner. Eisner wanted a very alien and the thing-esque story for the creature, and making the Gilman's origin tied to pollution and corruption. Unfortunately, during this time, which is around 2007 to 2008, the writer strike happened, halting all production on the reboot. Eisner decided to finish his film, The Crazies, and then go back to Creature when that was over and done for. When it came time to film, it was decided to film in Brazil and on the Amazon River in Peru, right on location with minimal CGI. Allegedly, a boat set from the movie exists, but the evidence of that is scarce. The script was being retooled, and it was looking like we might finally get our creature from the Black Lagoon movie. And just like that, it stopped. It was gone forever, until of course, in 2009. In 2009, it was thrown around that a movie called The Black Lagoon was being made, a reboot with a retooled name that would be produced by Mark Abraham and Gary Ross. By 2011, the film was abandoned and would continue into 2012. In 2012, we had a semi-dark universe creature movie again titled The Black Lagoon. Universal hired Dan Kajganich to write the film for a 2014 March release. And, well, it never came out. It was tried again by seemingly the same crew, but this time with big name actors like Chris Evans and Scarlett Johansson. This reboot was set to appear on the scene in 2020, which obviously hasn't happened. Yet. As of recording, we still have a few months left of 2020, so anything can really happen, but without a trailer or any news, I highly doubt it. Going back a few years to 2017, we finally had our creature reboot. Well, sort of. If at least you count Guillermo del Toro's masterpiece, The Shape of Water, which took the concept of the original with a sympathetic, albeit dull creature, into a sympathetic and monstrous, but extremely intelligent, loving monster. It's a great film and really serves as a reboot or even a sequel to the original. Alas, it's not canon and not recognized as a universal picture. So it's up to you where you can put this movie. And that's it, the complete history of the oddity that seems to be the Creature from the Black Lagoon remake. Will it ever see the light of day from the depths of the Murky Lagoon? Maybe. With the release and success of Universal's The Invisible Man, I think it's very safe to say that the Dark Universe is back, baby, and I think Creature might crawl his way out soon. Thank you guys so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed the first video of Debunktober. Get ready for many more. Make sure to follow all of our social medias for updates and exclusive content, all linked in the description. Especially consider becoming a patron as even $1 a month really helps and you guys get some really slick rewards. And of course, make sure to like this video, share this with your friends, and subscribe. As always, my name is Seth from Debunk File. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye.